Hi, everyone. For our next talk, our presenter couldn't be here today, but um, Geoffrey Kirui sent a video of his presentation, so we're going to see that in a little while. Um, he's a geomatics engineer and GIS professional with over five years in GIS implementation in water services. In water services providing companies in Kenya using open softwares in GIS and modeling softwares. So now I'll present his, um, his video. And if you have any questions, please leave them on Venueless and I will make sure to get them back to him. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I am Jeffrey Kernwe from Nairobi, Kenya. The lead consultant at GIS for Water and Sanitation. Today, I am going to talk about the use of open source software in GIS by water service providers. This is because the main challenge in water cycle management is the lacking of tools to put the idea in a practical and accountable manner. So, before implementing GIS in a water utility organization, you need to ask three main questions that are worth considering. First, is the reason why you need to use open source software. Second, is which are the software to use. And thirdly, how the software are being used in water applications. The reason why you need to use open source software is the general public license, which allows reuse of the software and application of geospatial functionalities without cost. Open source has a bright future because it has a lot of room to grow. And the software developers of open source has flexibility in the services. The following of the software we are talking about today. For GIS database, use PostgreSQL and its spatial extension, PostGIS. Of course, QGIS software, GIS water application for water cycle management, data collection tools like input and merge in. And develop web application with software like GeoServer. And there are other additional software for simulating water network models. And sewer network models. And open source ERP and CRM software like Odoo. It's always good to start using GIS database. PostgreSQL is the world's most advanced open source relational database and can be downloaded from the official website. After downloading, in Windows operating system, you run the installer. and follow the installation steps. You are required to create a password and specify the port. Optionally, install the Stack Builder to download and install additional tools such as the PostGIS. Once finished, you can check it's running using pgadmin and enter the password you created earlier. And there you have a GIS database. QGIS software is easy to install and can be found at the official website. For demonstration purposes of this presentation, we will require a long-term release. On Windows machine, run the installer. Follow installation steps, and there you have your GIS software, QGIS.
GIS Water is an amazing application which manages water, sewer or flood risks. It integrates with a couple of applications. To install it on QGIS, you need to copy the plugin URL from GIS Water official website. Go to the plugin settings and add the new repository. The repository should have a name and paste the URL you copied and click OK to add the new repository. You are then able to search for the plugin and find it because we have the correct repository. Install GIS Water and its launch icon is added to the QGIS plugins. Then to use GIS Water, we need to connect QGIS to PostGIS, but first let's create the databases in PostgreSQL. Water and sewer services are treated differently in GIS Water. For this reason we have to create a database for each. For correct functioning with GIS Water we need to add two mandatory extensions. Post GIS and PG routing to the two databases. Now we can add PostGIS connection in QGIS. To add a new PostGIS connection in QGIS, we require to specify the connection parameters, such as the name, host, port, database, username, and password. We need to add two connection to the two databases we created in PostgreSQL. Now we are able to access the databases with GIS Water by clicking on the GIS Water launch icon and enter the username and password of the database. Step in working with GIS Water is to create a database schema. In the schema parameters, select the project type for example Urban Drainage, Project Name, Title and Projection Coordinate System. For now we are going to create an example data. Then the second step, is to create QGIS project file which can be opened in the normal process with QGIS. The PostGIS connection now has the Urban Drainage project. Corresponding features in the map canvas are visible. such as the pipelines and manhole. GIS Water has six user functionalities to take care of each user needs. Basic user for just consulting GIS data, operation and maintenance simulates actions on the actual network, addition user inserts eliminate or modify GIS data. Master plan for plan sectors of the network. Hydraulic for the management of hydraulic behavior of the network, and finally utilities allow for the control, topology, 
value management and data import. But what happens when there is no data for GIS? There is need to prepare the data from different sources, such as hard copies or conversion of formats, from AutoCAD to Shapefile. But the challenge comes when one needs to go to the field to collect data. GIS water can be accessed by web clients, but that is not our scope today. I want to mention mobile apps that are useful in this process. We have input mobile application that works with Mergen for collaborative work. You can create and publish QGIS project and track data changes. You can sign up in Mergen website for free and publish QGIS projects and download input app on your mobile phone for data collection. All you need to do in QGIS is to add a Mergent plugin. You can add online and offline base map layers, drop down list attributes pictures and so on provided your layers are a geo package layer or post GIS. and you can add a feature on QGIS or input app, and synchronize the changes. In Mergen you are able to see the time when changes were made to a layer, and by whom. Similarly, you are able to get your latest updates on mobile devices by syncing. The visualization of the project are similar in Input App. QField is an efficient field work tool built for QGIS. The QField Sync plugin helps preparing and packaging QGIS projects for QField. While QField Cloud allows for a seamless field work in beta for pre registered users, you can download it from QField official website. QField Sync plugin for QGIS can be added but I will demonstrate how to install the experimental plugin. In the plugin you choose the settings tab and check to show experimental plugins. We are copying the merge and project to demonstrate how QField Cloud plugin works. We are able to now edit a pipe layer, and add the layer, together with attributes information. And upon saving the changes. In the mobile application, QField beta version. We are able to see the project. 
but the changes are not reflected in QField app until we click on the Cloud Sync in QGIS. It is seen that the project in QField app is similar to that of QGIS. Sharing GIS data to user is equally important to using GIS desktop applications. But the issue is the how. I want to mention one of the most popular application, GeoServer. It uses open standards to publish data from any data sources. Including PostGIS, that we have seen how it can benefit water cycle management. But today, we are not focusing on GeoServer. I also want to mention that QGIS server is in the architecture of GIS Water to publish water and sewer data through Google Chrome web browser to allow for web feature services editing and other GIS features. The best example is how QGIS Cloud works. Mapbox Vector Tiles has provided light web mapping solutions in East Africa. This is good for low internet connectivity. Together with Mr. Jin Igarashi we developed one web map for Nakuru Water and Sanitation Company. With capability to measure lengths. Search the customer meter by account number, 3D visualization and printing. Its developments is on GitHub and you can have a look at it and the documentation, and see how it can benefit. I will not end this talk without mentioning the additional software for simulating water and sewer networks. GIS Water incorporate them to allow for running simulation within QGIS environment, which I think it's astonishing development. Lastly, I want to mention one of the open source ERP and CRM software there is. Odoo is one software that runs on PostgreSQL database making it possible to integrate with GIS Water. Its applications can be developed to suit an organization needs. So yes, it is possible to use open source to manage the water cycle. But it requires the learning of software, and keeping up to date in the advancements. That is the end of my presentation, in use of open source GIS in water utilities. Thank you for your time to listen, and a happy GIS.